Apple set to be cutting production targets for its Vision Pro headset because manufacturers are struggling with its complex design. The tech giant is now preparing to make fewer than 400,000 headsets, according to reports from the FT. Joining us now is Bloomberg's Mark Gurman and Anurag Rana of Bloomberg Intelligence. Mark, let's start with you here. Look, $3,500 price tag announced a couple of weeks ago. How much of a difference does this really make to Apple? Uh, it's negligible, right? This is an immaterial product. It's going to remain immaterial probably for the next uh, three to four years at minimum. I think what we're seeing here is a mix of both supply and demand. Uh, Apple introduced the product about 30 days ago, a month ago at this point. They have a better idea of the reception of the product. They have a better idea of who's going to buy the product. And it's probably a combination of them seeing that people are not going to buy it in the quantities they initially anticipated. In addition to the complex design, the complex design means that they have curved motherboards. There's 12 external cameras. There are materials like carbon fiber and new types of aluminum that the company hasn't used before. Uh, there are many complexities in this device. In fact, it's the most complex device Apple has ever made uh, from an engineering and from a production standpoint. So to me, uh, this is no surprise. This is at least the fourth uh, cutback or reduction in, product, in, in quantity that Apple has uh, made to the Vision Pro. Initially, they were looking at about three to four million units. Uh, they reduced that to a, a million units. They reduced that to about 900,000 units and then to about 600 to 700K. So this is yet... Uh, an, another decline here. This is something they uh, have been working with their partners on yep. even before the introduction as well. Anurag, does this prove that Apple's gone early when it didn't need to? Should it have waited? As Mark says, the, the engineering is super complex and getting it right is going to be really difficult, particularly at scale. Why didn't they wait one, two years. It's not like the metaverse is taking off right now. Why didn't they wait a little, little longer, let the engineering get easier and get it right and deliver it in the volume that maybe they'd have originally liked to do so? You know, I think somebody would argue that they didn't go, you know, soon enough, because in our view, the real uh, key kick is to create an ecosystem of applications and people who use this kind of uh, equipment. So when you come up with equipment like this, it's going to take a few years for people to build applications on it, to figure out how what the use cases are, and then you can assume a mass adoption, assuming the price of the, the headset goes down. Anurag, so the, the, the product here is just one part of the equation with Apple right now. Last week it hit a $3 trillion market cap. Enormous, the first company around the world to do so. To me, my favorite fun fact about, about Apple is that every time it hits that trillion dollar milestone, you see a massive sell-off in the stock as well. What could be the catalyst for that sort of sell-off? I think a lot depends right now. I mean, to be very honest, is the second half and what kind of economy we are going in. Tech stocks have gone up quite a bit over the last six months. And frankly speaking, when you look at the fundamentals yeah. of, uh, you know, spending, it's not as strong as, as uh, you know, one would have expected. Okay. I hear what you're saying, Anurag, and I hear what you're saying about maybe wanting to go earlier and maybe you want to build that ecosystem. So, Mark, let me pitch that back to you. If that's the case, why go VR rather than AR? Yeah, that's a very good question. So I'm going to hit your first question to Anurag first. You know, in order to get that economies of scale, in order to improve that engineering uh, and production capacity, you really have to start somewhere, right? You can't work two more years behind the scenes to get that capacity, right? You have to actually get that product into manufacturing. So that's why they had to do that. You'd have to start somewhere, really land a, a beachhead and go from there and improve on the product. Uh, in terms of your second question, so this product, from a technology standpoint, standpoint, like you said, is virtual reality. What they've done is they essentially have made fake AR glasses. Instead of using pass-through lenses, waveguides, and making a design that looks like glasses, they've made fake ones or quasi-AR glasses by using displays as well as cameras outside to create an augmented reality effect. The technology to make standalone AR glasses without using VR as the core technology, it's not possible on consumer grade scale today. That's something that's likely not going to be feasible for at least three to five more years. And again, it's the same thing. They have to start somewhere. So they're starting with this VR based technology. And eventually, as the technology to go pure AR becomes available, they'll transition to that. 
Mark, talk to us about pricing power here. I think the initial pushback from a lot of the investor community was that you're slapping on $3,500 for a consumer product, for a product that's supposed to kind of go mainstream to a lot of consumers. Talk about Apple's ability to price its products, not just with the headset, but when it comes to smartphones, laptops, is that deteriorating to some extent? You know, I think it's two different worlds. I think it's pricing for the Mac for many years, even for a couple decades. Uh, the standard idea was that Apple's computers are way overpriced, uh, and that is certainly true. But pricing has come down recently. I would argue that their latest laptop, that 15-inch MacBook Air, uh, that is actually a pretty competitive price. Uh, but on the other hand, you look at their high-end products like the Mac Pro, that's a $7,000 starting price. That's quite a bit out of people's price range and is a bit of, of absurd pricing compared to the prior model, which was uh, about 20% less or 15% less in cost. I think the Apple headset pricing is very interesting. I think this is such a niche product that if they priced it anywhere between $3,000 and even $6,000, it would have the same exact market, right? So that $3,500 price point, you know, if you were you're still going to be a attracting yep. the people you would be attracting anyways, even if it was a little cheaper, even if it was more expensive. For this type of product, you really want to get sub $2,000 in order to gain share and gain momentum. And until they're able to do that, which they plan to in the tail end of yep. 25 or an early calendar 26, that won't happen. So what I'm hearing from both of you is this is a beachhead. This is an experimenta experimentation process. They need to get it out there. They need to start the ball, ball rolling. So Anurag, if that is the case, if we see further technical issues, I, as you both laid out, this is a super complex product. If there are further technical glitches, which I'm assuming there will be, is the market really going to care? Does the market really mind? We're basically doing R&D and experimentation out in the open now. So people who think of Apple as a hobbyist, I mean, they, they will mind. But frankly speaking, from a financial point of view, it doesn't move the needle at all. This, this product is not going to have any significant impact on financials for several years out. 